Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. I have been announcing this collaboration for a while, and here it is, a full collaboration with Thran from Thain channel. Now on this channel Thran mostly talks about ancient warriors, weapons, armor, but he also does a lot of tests, he actually has a little bit of a more of a practical approach to this, you know, testing armor, weapons, doing tamishigiri and the like. Now considering the fact that we both own sets of samurai armor, we decided to join forces to create the ultimate test of mobility in samurai armor. For this video, Thran will do some Tameshigiri, but considering the fact that he's more agile and athletic than me, he will also taking care of the more audacious moves, while I'll be uh, releasing some unreleased footage of Samurai Armor in Snow that I've taken specifically for this collaboration, and also a little bit of weapon mobility myself. Hey! Thran here, and greetings, noble ones. That's right, I'm doing a uh, collaboration with Metatron, and uh, it was his idea. I think it's a great idea. Uh, we both have armor from Iron Mountain Armory. But anyway, what we're going to do today uh, is I'm going to do some stuff that uh, was requested by Metatron. I'm going to do some uh, Thomas Shigeti, uh, which is cutting with this fine katana I have here, which I have my Minpo hanging on there. Uh, we're going to do that to see how well the armor behaves if it restricts movement. I'm going to be doing a lot of ukimi, uh, which is like tumbling, uh, cartwheels, rolls, climbing, uh, and see how well I can move in the armor with weapons. He wanted me to, to uh, do that, so I might do some stuff with the uh, Kamakata Yari and the Yari. With any without further ado, uh, I'm sure we want to get going with all these tests. At the end, we shall uh, give our opinion. And I have the tatami armor, like I said. I have this uh, style armor from the 16th century and the Neomato style. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Off to you, Metatron.
Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed that. And really, Thran, thank you so much for your support and your help. And he's really pretty amazing. I mean, the things he did, the ukemi that he performed. Probably if I tried to do the exact same thing, I would end up in hospital. But anyways, um, I'd like to say that both of us were, are very happy with the sets of armor that we own. And these sets of armor, were the, the sets of samurai armor we are wearing during these videos and clips and footage, they were all made by Iron Mountain Armory. Now, both Thran and I highly recommend Iron Mountain Armory as they are they can create really good fully wearable and fully customizable samurai sets of armor so if you want to get your own samurai set of armor then you can find links in the description below to the pages of Iron Mountain Armory where you can have your own samurai set made we will now have a section where both Rand and I will describe the sets of armor that we own so that we can understand what sort of um, burden uh, Thrand had when he was doing all those interesting moves and while I was moving in the snow, for example. We will talk about the thickness of the place, the material, etc. But before we do that, there is a book that I highly suggest you to get. Now, if I may have a moment of your time, Welcome to News in 60 Seconds or Less, the section of my videos where I talk about news and sponsors within 60 seconds. Let's see if I can manage. Today I'd like to introduce to you a book, and it's called Ninja Skills by Anthony Cummings. Reading from the book's introduction, the infamous ninja, expert commander, secret agent, who operates outside social norms. In fact, the truth about the ninja is so much more complex and intriguing than the Hollywood cliché. We may think, for example, of a ninja as being always clothed in black and fighting with rowing stars, but a real ninja would have used a number of disguises in colors suitable for different situations, and his arsenal could have included anything from poison and fire creating tools to swords, spears and knives. This book starts with the actual fundamentals, but then it's further divided into sections, sorted by skill categories. It's a very well organized guide into the world of the ninja, the Shinobi no Mono and his skills. If you're a history buff and you enjoy learning more about the, the Shinobi no Mono, the actual real historical techniques, then definitely the book for you. Link in the description to the Amazon page where you can get this book. Now the set of armor that I'm using for this video is a samurai armor, it's a Tose Gusoku or modern armor. So we're talking about late 16th century set and it was handmade because Iron Mountain Armory, they customize your armor, they, it is handmade. And it was made uh, using the same techniques uh, that craftsmen used 500 plus years ago. Now talking about the thickness of the plates, which is what many people ask, in this case we're talking about traditional 0.8 to 1.2 millimeters uh, thick plates. Now, some people might argue and think that that is not enough to provide proper uh, adequate protection but not only is, the, is it is it a traditional meaning that if, if it worked for the samurai you know it can work for the modern warrior as well but also you have to consider that in a lot of areas of the armor the plates overlap so basically if you do uh, attack or you do strike at one of these sets of armor then the, your weapon will have to deal most of the times with with twice as much thickness if it hits the armor where two plates meet which is you know in a lot of in a higher very high percentage of the armor but it's also advantageous because it makes the armor lighter and it also the plates absorb the impact of any given strike now I noticed some people got confused about the material because of course when you look at the armor you see it looks very shiny glossy and I noticed some people saying well it's not difficult to perform to move in that armor because it's just plastic it's not plastic it's lacquered okay which is again traditional but the material is metal now for the majority of cases and most parts um, we're talking about cold rolled milled steel which is actually the closest kind of steel you can get to what were you what was used by the craftsmen of craftsmen or samurai armor uh, towards the end of the Sengoku period uh, just before the Edo Jidai. Um, sometimes you can also find iron depending on what parts of the armor we're talking about but for the, for the majority of cases it's steel. So the armor does have a certain uh, level of burden okay but it's not that much as you could see and at the end of the day although it will be easier to do all those things without armor than it would be um, with armor uh, but of course you have to consider it's always with armor it's always a matter of um, how much mobility you're going to lose in exchange for uh, protection but with samurai armor with these sets of armor it's not that much you can still do all you need to do to fight effectively which is really all you want with armor and thanks to what Thran showed us you can even do more than that 
have the tatami armor, which I'm not showing here. I'm showing the two recent armors that we've received. I'm wearing the Niamato style uh, Yorari uh, from the 16th century. Uh, this one is set up where it's very flamboyant, very uh, elaborate. This is something like a, uh, a daimyo would wear. Uh, this one over here is more of a footman's. At this time period, they were mass produced, the armors. So they wanted to make them look more distinguished on somebody of higher stature. This one, although it is still embellished quite a bit, you've got some uh, nice gold on it. Uh, the fluting that makes it look like the old O Yarari, which I'm sure that uh, Metatron has his armor like that. I've seen it, it's beautiful. The earlier period uh, knotted armor. Uh, this is actually a footman's armor, but they did this to make it look more like the actual uh, Karuda laced together on the uh, Sore and right here on the Spasari. Uh, we have something different, the Sonate. The Sonate looks uh, almost like the ones I'm wearing, but it has the Japanese version of Brigadine for the knee, so it's more flexible. It's not a hard knee like these. On this Sonate, I have a hard knee. These do not. These have a flexible knee. Also, this is actually almost like the arms on the Kote right here. Uh, these are light greaves, like solid greaves, but they're not. They uh, are flexible. So this gives you a little bit more mobility for kneeling, stuff like that you need to do. These, you can still do it. Uh, it's just that they're a little more solid, and they kind of give a little restriction, but they're much better on, uh, mounted, I'm sure, if one was being attacked from the ground up. But other than that, most of its appearances, the uh, helmet is put together differently slightly. They're both solid. This one's designed to look like it was pieced together, like an earlier period helmet. This one, they made no attempt to do that. It's just a solid style helm. So, final conclusion. We tested the armor in various environments, and the overall results are overwhelmingly in favor of the idea that samurai armor is very mobile. Weight is still a factor, but the armor is constructed in a way that it does not restrict your movement. You can fight in it, you can move in it, you can run, you can move in lots of different kinds of terrain, still enjoying an almost complete and intact level of mobility. Samurai armor is truly a magnificent achievement of technology, tradition and passion. And who do we have here in the armor? I've been going around and around through this area, testing mine. With one opponent lurking in the shadows, always one step ahead of me. There we go. Now I can bring you. Oh. It's catty! So what did you think about the armor? Fries on you. Good so jitsu there on you. Uh, did you have fun actually running around in it today? Yeah. Now, anyway, let's give our evaluation. Fries on you. Give a evaluation for a, a Metatron. Uh, I was able to do pull-ups in the armor. Uh, I was able to swing from arm to arm. So the weight is a factor. It makes it much more difficult, and uh, you need a lot more endurance and strength. But I was able to do it nevertheless. Uh, I was able to do ukimi in it, rolls, cartwheels. Uh, I had some trouble with handsprings. Yeah, <laughs> some people will know what I'm referencing out there. Uh, I was able to do tamashigeti. Uh, it did pose some problems because I am not used to being in full yorari doing tamashigeti. But I was able to do some cuts. I think they were clean enough, pure enough. Uh, I'm sure I could do better without the armor on. But I mean, only by hair. If I trained in the armor, I think I would have no problems whatsoever. Uh, how did you feel about the weight? Didn't actually have any problems with it after a little while. You get kind of used to it, plus with it being spread out. Uh, very much like the ones you see in a museum, uh, in a Japanese museum. Uh, it's, they are copied after those types. 
Uh, obviously, this was hard to film out here in the area that we're in uh, due to lots of different reasons. I mean, we've had bystanders come by. This is actually a wildlife refuge, although it does look uh, very much like something you would expect in a setting where two, two uh, warriors or bushy samurai would be hunting each other down. Did you have fun in our little game today? Yeah. No. She did the least, but she still got to run around in it. You got to climb There's over things, jump. To be honest, the only re uh, the reason I did less is because honestly, generally I I don't do cartwheels. Ah, uh, she's not I as good at the ukimi or the uh, tumbling or. I fall oh. on my head most of the time. Well, yeah. I, um, I don't want to try with it. <laughs> but other than that, you didn't feel extra. Nope. I felt a little more part. endurance. Uh, that's about it, and a little bit the weight. But the mobility is extreme. You pretty much, if you put it all properly, you can do anything you could do without it on. Uh, it's like I said, just the stamina, endurance, and a hair more strength is required. Uh, but I mean, it didn't make you, you were able to climb it. If you're doing common climbing, you're not doing anything extreme like uh, acrobatics or gymnastics, I, I think the armor is fine. It'll do everything. Uh, I'm curious to see how uh, Metatron does in his. As always, uh, Corvell. Okay, noble ones, thank you very much for watching. I'd like to thank Thrand again for uh, this opportunity for joining forces with me. And I would also like to thank the guys at Iron Mountain Armory for their work and dedication. Also, thank you Anthony Cummings for providing a free copy of your book. I really enjoyed reading it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, noble ones, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.